Yom Yoga Warriors, Mickey Space here, um, guiding you through a little breakdown today on um, Chaturanga. So Chaturanga, or Chaturanga Dandasana, as it's technically called, is essentially that position where many of us struggle, and um, <clears throat> and there's many reasons for that. It's uh, it's a pretty strong position, and it does require a lot of strength. Um, but it's something that's uh, sort of used uh, used very commonly in vinyasa practice as a uh, as a vital part of the flow, both in our sun salutes um, and in the vinyasa flow itself. So it's that it's that point between um, either a plank, an up dog, into a down dog, and backwards and forwards between those those different places. It's that transition. So it's a, it's essentially like a push up, really. That's what it is. It's a push up where we come halfway down, we float off the ground into an up dog, or back to a downward dog. Um, so particularly when you're new to the practice, if we're not, uh, let's say, well-versed in a lot of strength training, we come to a yoga class and we can freak out a little bit because uh, it's, it's a challenging pose. And there's almost this expectation that everyone can do a chaturanga. You come into a vinyasa class, everyone's flowing with their chaturanga. But believe you me, that's what you might think as a student sitting on your mat, but as a teacher, watching all the other students, um, probably 80% of the students are doing it pretty badly. <laughs> um, and that's no fault of the student, it's maybe that they just haven't really um, had the time to explore this pose. But more than explore it, build up the actual strength required for it. So that can actually take um, many months, if not years, of dedication to to build up that particular strength. So don't fret if you're not there yet, um, but with practice, you will get there. And there's always options. So let me show you. So um, from a downward dog, let's say, from a downward dog coming into a high plank. So with a high plank, we're um, ideally in a nice straight line from uh, heels to shoulders. From there I would come halfway down and there's my chaturanga right there. From the chaturanga into an upward facing dog. Back to my chaturanga and here pressing back up to a downward facing dog. So I may make it look easy, but that's years of practice. And believe you me, I still struggle a little with my own chaturanga. Um, it does require a fair, a, bit, a lot of, of upper body strength, both in the chest, in the shoulders, in the upper arms. So all those areas need to be um, strong. A um, little internal core as well, to be able to just flow with that smoothly. So what happens when we don't have that upper strength yet? So first of all, I'll come front on here. So first of all, when you're, when you're coming down, and, and if you looked at the previous video, I talked about stacking our joints, let's say, in a lunge, so knee above the ankle, um, just for, for the right alignment so that the joints are safe. So here, uh, the knee. Whichever joints up above um, is going to be the compromised joint generally. Sometimes it can be the lower one. Um, so right angles or essentially stacking the joints for good alignment. So when we're in Chaturanga, there's three main joints that we're working here in the upper body. And that is our wrists, our elbow and our shoulders. So what we need to be doing, I'm here on the knees just to demonstrate, is of course, is stack those joints so that they're all in alignment. So your elbows need to be above the wrists, and then the shoulders, uh, the elbows also need to be in line with the shoulders. So by that I mean they don't come out like that. And how many times do I see that? Very common, because essentially coming down like this, 
requires that strength to be able to hold it. So if we don't have that strength, the most common mistake is to create some space there, oh, which usually lets people then collapse. Um, but apart from the collapsing bit, we're creating those obtuse angles here, actually, particularly with the wrist. That's what's going to be compromised. All the weight going into the wrist, when there's an obtuse angle, it's actually, if you do that regularly, that will damage your wrists in time. So what do we do to avoid that? We stack the joints. So at the eye of the elbow needs to be facing the head. So if it's on its side there, then naturally the elbows will want to go out. So it needs to be facing ahead. So when you bend the elbows, the elbows are coming back into, essentially into your chest, into like you're hugging your uh, rib cage there. So it's this position here. So good practice, really, if you do want to um, build up the strength for Chaturanga, is essentially what I'm doing here, just these little kind of mini push-ups, doing a bunch of these from the knees, first of all, because um, that's a little easier than doing it with the legs straight, but already, oh, already that was good work for shoulders, upper arms there, and, and my chest. So that's really important, that um, stacking of the joints so you come down like that. So that's why we often suggest to begin with in Chaturanga, rather than doing the actual Chaturanga like such, which is obviously a challenge for many of us when the strength's not quite there, is to come into your high plank, drop the knees down, and then come down like that. So at least you're training the body. You could just come into a cobra. Or once you're down, you can come into your upward dog onto the tops of the feet. You roll the shoulders back, engage the core. Really important when you're working with your back bends to keep that core engaged. Because if you let go of the core, then we end up crushing into the lower back. That's another whole video in itself. But um, yeah, the main thing with our chaturanga is to make sure those uh, joints are stacked. Now the other thing to consider is the shoulders themselves. Often when we're struggling there, we drop the chest and we it's like we squeeze the shoulder blades together. So we essentially collapse in the shoulders as well, which is not good. So it's the opposite you want to do there is, is rather than, than that. You want to be the broadening through the shoulder blades coming down like that. So then you're creating that strength through the upper back as well. So not to draw the shoulder blades in, but rather spread them out and maintain that as you come down. So we may need to spend some time with our Chaturanga on the knees first, on the knees first, coming maybe all the way down to begin with, working up to coming half the way down from half the way down. We could drop then the tops of the feet. Remember, create that space in the shoulder blades, between the shoulder blades. From there, an upward dog, core's engaged here. And from there, maybe we can use the core to press up all the way to a downward facing dog. Ultimately, we will be able to come halfway down, roll onto the tops of the feet, back to halfway down, and press back up to downward facing dog. So I hope that's helpful. Remember the main things to, to consider not to flare out the elbows, keep the eye of the elbow facing ahead. But the other thing to consider also is a little Hasta Bandha is really useful here. Hasta Bandha is creating like a little space underneath the palm. Here we get into fine details, but it's essentially pressing into all, all of the fingertips and to the rim of the palm there, so that you're, it's like you're kind of lifting up the inner palm like such. And that just gives you a little more strength 
into the lower arm there so that a little less pressure goes into the wrist. So that kind of like you're gripping, a gripping action, like a gecko. And, uh, the way geckos walk on walls, they've got their cluster bunda always happening there. So it's a little, a bunda is a lock, and the lock is within the palm itself, within the hand. So hasta bunda, stack joints, eye of the elbow forward, space between the shoulder blades. So maybe first of all, and core engaged. So maybe first of all on the knees sometime, and then ultimately when you build up that strength, maybe you do a few of those push-ups on the knees regularly, we can then build our way up to the, the full Chaturanga Dandasana. I hope that was helpful. Thank you for joining.